Psalms chapter 55 <clears throat> to the chief musician on Nigioth, which is a string instrument, Mashiel, which is instruction, a psalm of David. So this is to be played on a string instrument, violin, uh, and it's to be instruction. Give ear to my prayer. So this is a prayer. David's praying. A prayer to be sung. O God, and hide not thyself from my supplication. Now we're going to see in this chapter, as we go on, we're going to see what supplication is. It's a earnest prayer. It's not something written down. It's not something, you know, you know, five second, you know, say this prayer and you know you're done. It's not a prayer. You know, you you blessing your meal. It's an earnest, and we'll look at that in a minute. Attend unto me. Now, attend is to be present. And David is calling out to God, said, God, don't be in heaven. Be here with me right now. Attendance means I may, you know, when you're in a classroom, attendance is who's here. And if you're here, you're not tardy. So David's saying, listen, God, don't be tardy. Don't be missing. Be with me now and hear me. This supplication, this earnest prayer requires for David that God be there with him. I mourn. Now these are going to be some words of supplication. Mourning. And that don't mean when the sun gets up. Now look at this. In my complaint. Complaint is a word of supplication. You know, well, not to complain. But there's some godly complaints out there. But there are more complaints that are not godly. And make a noise. That's another one of supplication. Now, that's not the Pentecostal tongues movement. That's groaning. It's serious. He may be in pain. Listen, if a guy gets in an auto accident, and there's no help yet. And it's not on its way. I don't know if they called 911 yet or anything like that. But the accident has just happened. And if he's praying to God, he's groaning. How? Oh. Or maybe this supplication is so serious. That there's no work. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit makes intercession with groanings that we can't even now, I have never been in the place of prayer where I don't have a word, and I am not talking tongues. Tongues is a language. French, Italian, German, Polish are tongues. Do not get me with this Pentecostal nonsense of speaking the Spirit. There are just maybe sometimes in your life the only words you could speak is a noise. And we're not told when this prayer is in David's life, but we know in David's life he has had some tragedy. He has had some, as the enemy, the entire, see, like nation is against him, not the entire world. And we've already seen mourning, complaint, noise, because of the voice of the enemy. The enemy's got him. When you got the enemies against you because of who you are with the Lord, then there's supplication of prayer. Because of the oppression of the wicked. Oppression is another word for supplication. Supplication ain't a prayer like, you know, Lord heal this boo-boo on my arm and, you know, take care of it. You're finally seeing what supplication is described in David's own words, who is in supplication. For they cast iniquity upon me. Now that means to charge. And that is exactly what Jesus did. They called witnesses in, and witnesses came in, and no witness, the Bible says, could agree with each other about Jesus. They're saying that David did this, and he didn't do it. And anybody that lives godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution, shall suffer this iniquity of being cast upon them. 
Oh, look what he did. Oh, he did that. And you, you, you know and God knows, no, you did not. I have been charged with iniquity upon people. And I had one funny time in my life where the people that were told, because of my character and the Lord Jesus Christ, it was unbelievable. And I didn't hear it to, to a, it was like a joke. Do you have that clean character as a Christian? If people were to speak iniquity upon you, would there be people say, yeah, right. You are a liar. I know that guy. I may not know that guy, but I know the character of that guy. <coughs> Excuse me. Too many Christians cannot say that verse. If they were to have the iniquity cast upon them, there would be this, there would be a slight of doubt. Gee, I wonder. What about the preacher? What about the the uh, elder? What about the the deacon of the church? Have they read in Timothy where it, where it gives the qualifications for the elder? It gives qualifications for the deacon. It gives qualifications for the preacher. How about the woman in Proverbs thirty one? The godly woman. There are going to be people, even if you're saved or lost, they're going to say things about you. And what is your character? And in wrath, they hate me. There are going to be people that get so mad at you because you love the Lord and do right. They better not be mad at you because you're an idiot. They better not be mad at you because you're worldly, because you, you, you're just a bothersome. It better be in the Lord. There are people out there who, who, are, who are hated because they're just a jerk. Oh, I'm persecuted. No, you're not. You deserve what you get. Now supplication breaks into my heart is sore pain. That's supplication. Not you, your heart. Pay attention to the heart of the Bible. That's not that bloody thing that, that pumps gallons of blood every day. That is who you are. That is your motive. That is what makes you up. And yet Jeremiah says the heart is deceitful above all things. 17.9 Supplication prayer with a heart pain, we're going to look in a minute, is there is trouble, extreme trouble. We'll read on. Within me. You know what? It's almost like giving him a heart attack. He's not having a heart attack, but brother, the pains are causing him to feel like it. You can, I, going by that verse, you can have a heart attack symptoms and it not be heart attack and not be acid reflux. It may be you're just in so much trouble. And you know what the worst thing about it is? You're completely innocent. What do you do when you are in so much trouble and you've done nothing wrong and there's nothing, there's nothing to say, I'm sorry. There's no offering when you're not guilty. The only thing you got is do what David did. Give ear to my prayer, O oh God. And if you can pray with a, with, a, with a clean heart and being innocent, God is your only way. If you offer an offering to the God, if you say you're sorry, you're only lying. You think God's going to bless that? False pretense. And the terrors, there's another supplication, of death are falling upon me. His life is put in the balance by the enemies. Saul had chased him. Saul had, had threatened him with that spear. This big giant came up to David one time and threatened him with death. And this is, listen, David, the man who he is, this is not, oh, you know, I'm, I'm going to die and tomorrow, you know, oh, no. The terrors of death. David is in fear of death. 
It is a Siri. If someone says, I'm going to kill him, David it, it, he believes it. Given the opportunity, if God doesn't step in, David will be a dead man. Fearfulness is another supplication item. A Christian ought not fear. That's true. But guess what? We do. What are you going to do about it? this? Oh, we don't fear and, and, and erase it. No. Listen. There is a godly fear in this. Oh, no. You're lying in bed. It's 2 o'clock in the morning. You smell smoke. What are you going to do? Oh, let's go back to bed. You're not going to have a fear? I remember three months, four months, maybe six months after I quit smoking. I was sitting in the trailer and, it, man, I smoked smoke. I called 911. I lived in a trailer. <laughs> Fire department came and all that. And I said, you know, I smoked smoke. They, they weren't apologetic. And, you know, I wasn't apologetic. And they, they understood. And I said, listen, I said, you know, I just don't understand where that fear smell came from. Oh, you weren't a Christian. Oh, yeah, I was a Christian. What would I say if I didn't didn't fear and call the fire department and have them check it all out? And then have the place burn down. There's a story in, in Texas where a school blew up and the janitor said, Oh, I think I smoked natural gas. Why didn't you do something? And trembling are come upon me. Trembling is a item under supplication what are you going to tell David oh he's not a Christian well I know he's not a Christian not a man of God God would beg differ with you are you saying a Christian should be fearful a Christian should be trembling I don't know I know Peter, when, when he's about to die, he's in jail and he's sleeping. I, the angel had to smack him across the face. I know Paul, that he had an affliction that he prayed to God three times. It builds upon who you are. God has not given us a spirit of fear, it says in Timothy. But if you step out in traffic and realize there's a bus coming at you, you're going to start giggling, start laughing? And horror is another ingredient of supplication of earnest prayer. Has overwhelmed the last ingredient of supplication me. Mourning, complaint, noise and prayer, the, 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 violent, the voice of the enemy, the impression, the casting upon iniquity, the, the wrath, the, the pain of the heart, the terrors of death, the faithfulness, the trembling, the horror, the overwhelming. Oh, I'm not going to feel like that. Okay. Supplication, earnest prayer. How are you going to feel when you're, when you're sitting beside a hospital bed and a loved one's right there in the hospital bed? And a doctor tells you, well, in 24 hours we'll, we'll decide what, what the outcome will. Now, I've, never been, I've never been through that. I've been through many hospitals. You, know, you get this agreement, you take this thing, you get this treatment, you don't get it. I never sat in supplications. When my wife died in the hospital, I, we didn't even know she was going to die. It was sudden. I had a doctor told me within 24 hours, would, would, uh, would, you know, we will see about the, the condition of the person. I, you know, I'd be in supplications. I'd be in, in terror. I'd be in... You know, and and uh, pain, I'd be in fearfulness and trembling and horror. Overwhelmed the Lord, if you don't do something in 24 hours.
And if it didn't work to your own thing, then know, you know, you get up and you still live the Christian life. I'm about to read Fox's Book of Martyrs for my next course. I would think that there was pain and terrors, but then again, some of the stories I already know, there was a guy that walked up to the thing, and he told the executioner, if you put your hand to my heart, if it's any more beaten than your heart, you don't have to believe in my God. Executioner touches his heart, and it's going boom, boom, boom. Touches his heart, boom, 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 boom. Yes, a Christian will suffer these things. It depends on the sequence. It de depends on the person. It de I mean, I am not giving a written hallway excuse to go off, go off the, the, I don't know what the word. I'm not giving you an excuse to go ahead and fear and all that. I'm not telling you that. I'll tell you the Old Testament. I'll tell you the Old Testament uh, people. Don't. Jesus kept telling the disciples over and over and over and over again, fear not. Is it a sin to fear? I don't know. Is it within our nature to fear? Yes. Is it in our free will to fear? Yes. It's also in my free will to go out and murder somebody. I have a choice to go murder somebody, but I don't. I have a free will to lie to people, but I don't. I got a free will to fear. But then again, this, this chapter is David with God himself. And I've always told you, when you're dealing with God, you better be honest. If you're mad at God, I heard someone tell me, one message, I don't know who it was. Don't tell God you're mad at him. Why not? He already knows it. And I have done many a time. I would say, God, I'm angry at you. I don't like this. I don't like that the Bible says that there are people suffering for somebody else. I don't like that because I may be suffering for somebody else. What, am I going to go up to God and say, well, you know, and hide it? God says, cast your cares upon him. Oh, I'm only supposed to cast the cares that I want, I want, I want? Why not how much I feel? David is being honest with God. Now, as a leader of his people, maybe he's not showing it. You know, just because a, a guy in church tells you, well, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Doesn't mean he's good. You don't know what he's suffering. There's a man in our church, a pastor asked me to pray about. <coughs> and there's things with his life that, you know what? He's not doing well. And he needs prayer. And you look at him, well, yeah, he and there's something I don't need to know and I don't want to know. I just lift him in prayer. And I said, oh, that I had wings like a dove. I don't know why he says dove. There are all kinds of birds. For then would I fly away and be at rest. You know what David's saying? I want to get out of this trouble. and I want to get out of it mighty quick. Who wouldn't? Who wouldn't? But face it, some of your problems and some of your supplication prayers may be a lifetime. There are people who are in a hospital today in a burn war with third degree burns. Never mind the second and first, but the third degree burns. And they're going to suffer for eternity. I, I, let me take that back. They're going to suffer for a lifetime. And they're going to suffer eternity if they're not saved. That's where I want to get the eternity in. If they're saved, they're going to suffer a lifetime and then be in glory without the pain. Get permission to go walk through a hospital if you got problems. 
There are some people in the hospital that will never see or smell fresh air. Because they're not going to come out of the hospital. And if they do, they'll be transported in an ambulance to a medical facility. Won't you think, as if they're saved, Dr. Ruckman speaks about a woman that has spent 40, 50, maybe 60 years in a hospital bed with bed sores being coated with Vaseline. Saved. Don't you think that she would just love to step out? This is sit on the park bench outside of, uh, of the hospital, outside to smell the air and watch the clouds. Whatever condition she is, do you think that she has supplications while she's in that bed? And we gripe and complain about our condition. See, there's a difference between griping and complaining because of our nitty-pitty little things, but when somebody's really in supplication and, oh, he complained before God. Yeah, he has a reason. Think about Job. Lo, then, would I wander far off. Uh-oh. And remain in the wilderness, Selah. Revelation 12 tells us you're talking about Jews in the tribulation. This is another psalm of the tribulation Jews. If I would have wings like a dove, what did Jesus say? Pray that your flight be not in the winter when the airplanes are grounded. We have another tribulation passage as the Jews running down to Sela Petra. I would hasten my escape from the windy storm and tempest. What is that? Jesus said, don't go back in your house and get something. And run! Don't go down into the... If you're top of the house, don't even go down to the first floor. Just go! And David backs it up. Don't tell me when Jesus didn't speak, those Pharisees who, who were supposed to know, the scribes who knew the Bible, did not bring this into account. The wilderness, the wings, and make haste. And what does David tell you? There's going to be a windy storm and kind of tempest chasing them. What does Revelation 12 say? It says that Satan is going to swallow up the Jordan River. And he's going to spew it out. It's going to be a lot of wind. Oh, look at that. Scripture with Scripture. And the earth opens up and swallows the thing. Where are you seeing that today? There are sinkholes forever showing you Revelation chapter 12 popping up over America. Coming to one big sinkhole. It's going to swallow up a whole river that the dragon swallows. Paragraph. I hope. I found some of my paragraphs don't mark. Match. Destroy, O Lord, and divide their tongues. So tongues is not noises. Tongues are, are, are the, are the non-Hebrew voices. The heathen, the, the Philistines, the Amorites, the Moabites. And whoever else is against them, or whoever in the world is against the Jew, neither the United Nations. For I have seen violence and strife in the city. Now, if you had put that on the, on the tribulation, what would that be? Antichrist sitting on the throne. David's time, if it's King Saul, look at all that Saul did. If it's Absalom, look at it. Absalom took David's wives out on the rooftop for everything to be seen above all the people. So either or, or three possibility. Destroy, O Lord, and divide their tongues, for I have seen violence and strife in the city. Day and night they go about it upon the walls thereof, Mischief also and sorrow are in the midst of it. Apply that to David's time. Apply that to the tribulation. Sorrow. Jews are being guillotined. People are being killed. 
Mothers' babies are refused treatment because they won't receive the mark. Wickedness is, is in the midst thereof. What is in the midst of Jerusalem? The temple. What is in the midst of the holy place? The Antichrist. Deceit, Antichrist. And guile, Antichrist, depart not from her street. Do you realize, my people, when you, I'm going to go over in a holy land village and I'm going to see everything and, and my cruise along the holy land and all that, that that holy land you are is going to be trampled by Satan? Won't be holy any longer. What did Revelation call it? The, be called Sodom? For it was not an enemy that approached me, okay? We were just in the tribulation. Watch this. It was not an enemy that approached me. We're taking a switch here. Then I could have borne it. If somebody really did, if somebody really hated me, did what he did, all right, it's the enemy. What what am I expect from the enemy? I've been in this one. Neither was it he that hated me that did magnif magnify himself against me. Well, if a guy hates you, I mean, of course he's going to say things against me. Then I would have hid myself from him. All right? If you knew somebody was wicked and an enemy and all that, you just stay away from him. Paul, Paul writes that, you know, if all possible, they live peaceably with all men. But if you can't, stay away from him. But we go on. But it was thou, a man my equal, my guide, and my acquaintance. Now for David, King Saul, Absalom, maybe, maybe Joab, Joab turned on him. Who would this be if it was Jesus? We marched right into Judas. We've been talking about the tribulation period. We marched into Jesus' life, and here we are talking about Judas. Guess who's going to show up in the, in the tribulation? As a disciple of Jesus Christ. Hey, I walked with him. I lived with him. I come out of my own place. Didn't Jesus say, you know, he refused me, but him that cometh in his own name, that you will receive? We took sweet counsel together. And walked unto the house of God in company. Judas was there when Jesus went in the temple. I don't know about Saul. I don't know about Absalom. Could have been Jonathan, but Jonathan went away from David in physical. He physically turned and went back to, 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 to Saul, his father. But he really didn't hurt David. He didn't betray David. He protected David all along. We're jumped over David and we're looking at, the, at Jesus Christ, who David's a type of. We took sweet counsel together and walked into the house of God in company. Judas did that. When it says the disciples followed Jesus into the... Let death seize upon them. Now, I don't think that's what David would say about Jonathan. 
Because when Don Jonathan died, David lamented. And let them go down quick into... Look at that. What is that word that preachers don't want to say today? That it, it's a four-letter word called hell. If this is Judas, he went into his own place, his own place in hell. And as we go through the Bible, we're going to read that hell has layers. Hell has different degrees. For wickedness is in their dwelling. And among them, Satan dwelt right, in, right amongst uh, uh, Judas because the Bible says Satan entered Judas. You can say Satan indwelled in Judas because that's exactly what happened. That's how the Bible words it. As for me, I will call upon God. What did Jesus do all through his life? What did he do on the cross? Eli, Eli. My God, my God. What did Judas do? He threw the 30 pieces of silver down the ground and went and hung himself. He went to the priest. He didn't go to God. And the Lord shall save me and resurrected him the third day. Evening and morning and at noon... Daniel 6.10 Will I pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice? When are you supposed to pray? Evening, morning, and at noon. You have to pray all the time. Even in 6 o'clock at night for the Jewish time. Morning, 6 a.m. Jewish time. Noon splits it in half. You're supposed to pray in the morning. You're supposed to pray before you go to bed. And then right in the middle of your day. He has delivered my soul in peace from the battle that was against me. 2 Samuel 18 is I got a note for that. For there were many with me. Now David had a whole army. A bag of bonds, misfits. I mean, you read, you read what it says. I mean, they, they, they owe money. They were rejected. I mean, he had a great crew of men with him. But you read about how they were faithful to David. Jesus had eleven, but when he died, there was only one, John. But yet he said, "I could call." 20-something legions of angels. One angel almost wiped out an entire military. Just left enough to go home in defeat and shame. God shall hear and afflict them. Even he that abides of old, there's that Selah again. Musical rest, tribulation passage. He will do it in my soul is when the Lord Jesus Christ comes back and picks up the Jews in, in the wilderness. Because they have no changes. Therefore, they fear not God. You ever read Revelation and get a shock? Have you ever read what happens in Revelation and the Bible records, I think it's three places, and the men repented not of their sins? And when Satan was loose, he still gathered an army. After a thousand year reign of Lord Jesus Christ, is the utopia that people keep talking about. And at the end of it, people still turn to Satan. He has put forth his hands against such as be at peace with him. He has broken his covenant. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. This is the worst kind of enemy. See, what is his enemy? You think he's your friend. 
He talks nice to you, but behind your back, anything but. We all can name at least one person. His words were smoother than oil, yet were they drawn with swords. That's the Antichrist. You read how he comes in with a bow and no arrows? He comes in with complete peace. And look what happens by the end of the seventh year reign of all the things that has happened. Cast thy burdens upon the Lord. Add burdens to supplications. He shall sustain thee. By the way, when you cast your burdens upon the Lord, don't go back and get them. How many times have people gone to the Lord and say, Lord, here, take this. And I don't know how long, short, usually, they walk back up to God and say, thank you very much, I'll take it back. You know what kind of God we serve? You want it back? Yes, Lord, I want it back. Okay, take it. Take it. Now, if you don't want it, I, I, I'll take it from you, but if you want it back, there you go. Read all the places where Jesus would just kept on going. Unless somebody were called out, then he stops. Has the accused not climbed that tree? The accused would never seen Jesus. And Jesus would never sat in his house. When Jesus was walking upon the waters, had the disciples not screamed out, Jesus would have been on the other side. Read the Bible. When he's on the road to Emmaus with those two men, and they say, Lord, come on, come join us. No, I'm going to keep on. No, Lord, come on in and join us. Then he sat down with them, had dinner. He broke bread with them. Then he revealed who he is and then disappeared out of their sight. Had they said, Lord, okay, you just keep on going. We're going to go home. He would have. He shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. But, oh, Lord, I, I, I do right and I get. All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. That is a eternal promise. Jeremiah did right and he was moved to Egypt. Uh, against his will when God told him to stay in the land so I guess going by that verse in Jeremiah the Bible is a contradiction tell Jeremiah the new earth okay Jeremiah you gotta go he'll laugh at you but thou O God <clears throat> Shall bring them down into the pit of destruction, lake of fire. Bloody and deceitful men shall not live out half their lives, days. So there is a possibility, I teach, that a man can die before God wants him to. I'm not going to speak to the lost people. I'm going to speak to the Christians. What if you died before God wanted you to? That's a loss. What if you died before God wanted to and all the, all the results that God wanted you, the fruit, those extra lies that you killed yourself by whatever you did? Yeah, God will find somebody else to do what, but it's not as much as God wanted you to do it. You know, if you got an office, you got a secretary that does her job like she's supposed to. I mean, you're happy with her. If she, for whatever reason she leaves the company and you hire somebody else, she may be just as efficient, but she's not going to be like that woman that left. But I 
will trust in thee. After all the supplication, all about Judas, about the tribulation period, what did Jesus say that applies to the Jew in Matthew and not to us? And those that endure to the end, that is not church age. I will trust in indeed. That is, and, and I will endure to the end. Don't you take any scripture where it says if, if he endured to the end. That is not church age. Through all my supplications, all through the troubles and problems of the tribulation period, all of the, of, of the, the wilderness and running from, from, from Judas. The enemy is doing everything they are to me. And the city has, has wickedness and destruction in it and death. And Lord, I need your help. Lord, I know you're going to conquer all the wicked people. But even through all that of 23 verses, I'm going to trust you. Now let me ask you a question. How, do you, how many Jews do you think are going to be in, in the wilderness when Jesus comes? I think I got the answer. You ready? This is my answer. Not many. Not many at all. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all thy hands have made I see the stars I hear the rolling thunder thy power throughout the universe displayed then sings my soul my Savior God to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God his Son not sparing sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, He bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee, how great Thou art.